Hi there. I just created the query, the calculated job hours query, which calculates the a particular employee's job hours based on their start time and end time for a particular job. I am going to create one more query that calculates job pay, or technically we can do it here in the same one. So I'm going, in fact, I'll go ahead and modify this particular query. I'm calculating start time and end time, which really isn't necessary anymore. So let me go ahead and click on these particular fields and delete job end time. I'm selecting it from the top and delete. I will keep the client ID. So if I were to rerun this, I'm still going to get the proper hour calculations, even though I don't have the start times and end times displayed. That's fine. The query is using those fields, but you don't have to have them displayed, even if you're using them. All right, then I'm going to jump back to design. I'm going to create another calculated field, which is going to take their job hours and multiply it by their employee pay. So let me go ahead and right click and zoom so I have more room to work here. I'm going to type in my new field name, which will be job pay. And I'm going to take employee pay and multiply it by job hours, the field that I just created. I'll click OK, and I'll run this to get my result. Now I'm getting a weird little anomaly here, but let me go ahead and format these as currency. So let's see how that looks. I'm going to go back to Design View, right click on this new field that I created, Properties, Property Sheet Format, I'll change that to Currency, Close, and Run Again. There we go, this looks a little bit better. So for a particular employee that only worked one hour and their pay rate was $24, $24 was their job pay. $32 an hour employee working three hours, $96, and so forth. So I could simply resave this query, but I think I'll go to Office, Save As, and I will call this one Calculated Job Pay. There we go, so now I have another query. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'm actually done with the queries for now. And let me go ahead and get into creating a report. I want to create a job pay summary report. So I'm going to go to my Create tab, and I will start off by creating a report using the wizard. You could start from scratch and create a report in Design View, but I'm going to use the wizard to do a lot of the uh, formatting work for me. So I'll click on Report Wizard, and I'm going to use a query that I just created. I'm going to use the query for calculated job pay. And I can see that I've got some various fields here. I'm going to bring over my employee name, and I'll bring over employee pay. Actually, I'll bring over job ID first, then I'll bring over the employee pay. Let's see, we could bring over job hours and job pay. Yeah, that's good. We don't have to bring over all the fields. We could if we wanted to. I think that's good for now. I'll click Next. I am going to do some grouping here because some employees work multiple jobs and I want to keep them organized. So I'm going to group by employee name. Next. I will uh, sort. Um, I will sort by of course I didn't bring in job date. That would have been a nice thing to sort by. I'll, I'll sort by job ID in ascending order. I'll keep the default layout, the default orientation. Next. Um, for style, I'll pick Trek. Next. Calculated job pay summary report. I'll change this over just to job pay summary report. And finish. Okay, here's how my report looks initially. I can see that um, for my summary, Ayla has worked one job, one hour. Brent has worked several jobs. Carla has worked several, and David has worked one. Okay, so what I'd like to set up now are some subtotals. I would like to get the subtotal for hours, the subtotal for their pay, and then I'd also like to do a grand total that, that lists them all. And for most of that work, we're going to be in Design View for a report. Right now I'm in Print Preview mode, so let me just close out of Print Preview.
and here's design view and if I didn't go to design view automatically I would use my view toggle on the left and make sure I'm in design view now design view can be a little bit uh, overwhelming sometimes but uh, keep in mind there are some things you can change and some things you shouldn't change for instance up here in the page header we have what are called unbound controls employee pay job hours and things like that for instance I could change these in the page header for instance I could put job space hours or I could retype instead of imp pay I could put in pay rate and if I jump back over to form I'm sorry to report view I can see those changes pay rate and job hours with a space back to design view if I made similar changes in the detail section I would break it in the detail section these are bound controls they must match up exactly with the data in the table so I can't make the modifications here unbound controls and bound controls and we're also going to create a calculated control here's how easy it is there's different sections to my report a report header is at the top of the of the report so whether it's one page or ten page it's at the very beginning page header is it repeated at the top of every page so if I had a ten page report this information would be repeated at the top of each of the ten pages the um, employee name header is basically where we're seeing the employees name kind of is the header to the group of employee data of course the detail section is where all the st is where all the detail from the table is coming from don't want to make any changes there either and of course page footer at the bottom of every page report footer at the bottom of the report I don't have any room to work here so I'm gonna take my arrow click and drag down and give myself some room to work in the report footer that's where our grand total is gonna go so here's how it works you go to the controls command the controls group in your design ribbon for the for the report and let's get a text box click it once and then draw a rectangle roughly where you might want down here and the report footer by default it's an unbound control but we're gonna remedy that right now let's go ahead and type this out like we would be typing a sum function in Excel equals sum parentheses job pay closing parentheses okay so it looks kinda how it would look if we were doing this in Excel but in access we need to make sure that we enclose a field name with square brackets okay so I'm summing up the job pay field let me go and see how this looks if I scroll down to the bottom of my report there's my total six hundred eighty one dollars now it doesn't really look that good so let's go back and do a little bit of formatting now so I'm gonna jump over to design view and I'm going to kinda of line this box up so that it matches up with the right alignment for the job pay while the box is active I'm gonna choose my right align button that will align it over there to the right of that box make that a little bit smaller the label over here on the left currently says text 13 I'm gonna change that to grand total and if I click on the sizing the large top left corner sizing handle I can move that grand total label a little bit closer to where my sum is and let's see how this is looking okay looking a little bit better let me make it a currency format as well let me go into design view I will right click on my calculated control now properties format currency close the property sheet report view there's my grand total 681 now I'm gonna do something similar so that I can get a subtotal from each each of my employees I'm gonna to go to design view and basically I need to work in a section which currently isn't available to me I have the employee name header but I want an employee name footer so I'm gonna to go to the group and sort option and I see that I'm currently grouping by employee name but I want to look for more options so I'm gonna click the more button and I've got a lot of choices in here so I've got these options available to me now currently you see it says with a header section and it says without a footer section you can add a footer section so that you can kinda of repeat the process let me show you another really quick slick way here 
Currently it says with no totals. For By the way, I'm still working on my employee name group. So I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to do a total on job pay. It's going to sum it and I'm going to show in a group footer. Okay? And just click away. Now that's with job pay total. Notice also we have some choices. Um, you can also show a grand total, which we've done in a more manual way. So employee name footer, look, they've kind of written in the sum function for us now, equals sum job pay in square brackets in the employee name footer. So they've done it in a more automated way as opposed to typing it in. And let me go ahead and run the report. There we go. So now we have a subtotal for each employee to go along with our grand total.